In this video, I'm going to be trying out my Magic Trackpad with my iPad Pro. For the first time, I'm just gonna quickly go over how to set it up, which is super simple, and how it integrates with iOS 13.4. So hit the like button, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and let's get into the video. Greetings AquaFam, it has been Aqua. So Apple released iOS 13.4 finally, and I just loaded it onto my iPad Pro. And for the sake of this video, I'm using the iPad Pro 10.5 inch. One of the awesome new features of iOS 13.4 is it enables trackpad and mouse support within iPad OS. For me conceptually, it already sounds like why would I need to be using a trackpad or a mouse with my iPad, but I'm seeing a lot of other YouTubers be like, this is amazing. So I wanted to try it out for myself. Is it worth using? a trackpad with the iPad or should you just use your freaking finger like you've always been doing? So I have my iPad on, I got the trackpad right here. I'm gonna turn it on and see just exactly what happens. I'm guessing I can just connect it using Bluetooth. So when I turned on the trackpad and I notice in the settings, I see Ben's trackpad. So I'm guessing I just tap on that. If there's a Bluetooth pairing request. Sure, why not? Do I just use, oh my God, there's a circle. There's a circle on my freaking iPad now. That's pretty cool. Wow, I'm using these same gestures, like the five finger, four finger gesture, or whatever, to see all your apps and stuff, to go to this. And wow, okay, that's actually really cool. I didn't think I would like this that much, but I'm already like, holy crap. So now I'm just gonna swipe around. So I'm using the same two finger swipe that I would use on my Mac products here. Oh, there was that was a little glitchy right there for a second. This is the first version of iOS 13.4, so I don't expect it to be 100% amazing. It's actually kind of refreshing and weird and fun to have a cursor on my iPad. And I noticed when I stopped touching the trackpad, the um, the little circle cursor thing went away. So to re-enable it, you just move your finger around and there you go. So if you wanna see your apps, let's see. Open Spotify here by accident for a second. So here we go, now Spotify is open. I'm able to scroll up and down on Spotify. So do I miss using my finger? Using my finger still feels a little more natural. So here's the thing about trackpads and kind of my overall feeling for them. I really love everything, the functionality of the trackpad. I think the Magic Trackpad is a beautiful device, one of my favorite and most minimal, kind of absurdly minimal products Apple has ever made. But the thing about the trackpad is just using it for a long time actually hurts my fingers because I'm like pressing down really hard using my index finger. So my index finger is actually probably a little more buff than my other fingers. I can see it's actually a little fatter. I don't know if that's a cute look or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and just like, click on stuff and as if I would with my finger. Okay, <laughs> this is really cool. I really like this. Okay, how do I go home? Do I swipe up like that? Okay, I swipe with four fingers up and let's go into something else. I'm gonna open up the App Store because that's not very incriminating or anything. Not that I have incriminating stuff on my iPad or anything. But yeah, just scrolling around feels really smooth even on this three-year-old iPad Pro. You know, click over to games. Things load up pretty quickly. Scrolling does, yeah, it's pretty smooth. And I actually love that I can use those same gestures to go to like this view where you can see your apps. Let's see if I can close an app. Close the app store, yep, you swipe up with two fingers, you close the app, go into like news so we can see all the latest in the depressing but amazing things that are happening in the world. So click out of here. I can say this to just immediately using the trackpad on my iPad. It feels natural because I'm already used to all the gestures and stuff on the Magic Trackpad on my Mac. So using them on the iPad feels normal. Like there's not really a learning curve here. I just kind of turned it on, paired it using Bluetooth and I'm already using it and it's scrolling nicely. It feels more like a Mac than it does an iPad all of a sudden. So it's kind of like, what are the advantages of using the iPad versus the Mac? That's like a whole other video, but real quickly, iPad for me is just a lot more convenient for a lot of simpler tasks, like, or even more advanced tasks, but a lot of simpler tasks too, like, you know, just checking your email, going to Facebook, going to Instagram, this and that iPad for me is just a much more fun experience, which compels me to use it more than my Mac. And really what I use my Mac for is having a bigger screen, like my giant five-year-old iMac over here or using my MacBook Pro. But there's something nice and portable and just more functional and fun about just using a 
iPad for most of the things. I would say about 90% of what I do, I can do on my iPad. And that includes photo editing, which I use Adobe Lightroom. So maybe you can open that one up next. So I'm gonna pop open Lightroom. I do all my photo editing on Lightroom on my iPad now. <laughs> There's a roll of toilet paper. And let's just see, does, Lightroom even support? Actually, I noticed that there's no scrolling going on in Lightroom using the trackpad. So maybe Lightroom doesn't support the trackpad yet. Some apps might actually need a little more time to support the Magic Trackpad and mouse configurations on the iPad, but so far so good. And um, it looks like I'm able to scroll in Twitter, which is pretty cool. Let me open like Safari and um, try to, uh, oh, you caught me. I was looking at refurbished new iPads on here. This is like what I do to stress relief is just look at prices for Apple products and just see if they've gone down at all. And what's the best deal on this and that. <laughs> We got a lot of stuff going on in the world here with coronavirus and this and that. I mean, we got a lot of things on our mind, at least I do, and I know a lot of you do. Looking through Apple products is stress relief for me. I can't explain why, it's just fun. It gets my mind off of a lot of the dumb stuff going on in the world, and very serious, but mostly dumb stuff going on in the world, in my opinion, but I'm not gonna get too political on your ass. Let's get back on topic. So when I'm in Safari, this feels like I'm on an actual Mac. This does not feel like I'm on an iPad right now. I even go over here and, you know, let's go to YouTube. And I, I actually really like that the cursor is just a circle. So I'm gonna go over to this awesome channel called Ben Aqua. I don't know if you're subscribed to it, but if you're not already, you should definitely subscribe. This person knows what they're talking about here. So I'm just gonna like play this video here and, you know, you can click on stuff, you know, like your quality, you know, just like you're in Safari on your Mac, you can full screen it click out of that if you need to or whatever. So yeah, I really like the experience so far of using a trackpad actually more than I thought on my iPad. I thought that it would be this really like, why would I need that on my iPad? It's nice that you can scroll using your finger and using a magic trackpad on your iPad. I think that's really cool. And I can definitely see using the trackpad as more of like a precision type of instrument where a finger can be sometimes kind of clumsy or it can shake a little bit and you're like, where is your finger actually gonna you know, touch the iPad? Where using a magic trackpad or a mouse, I could definitely see that coming in handy using an app such as, so let's say I wanted to like edit a video using LumaFusion over here. All right, so let's say I was like editing a video. I'm just gonna drag this into the timeline in LumaFusion and scrolling feels pretty natural. It feels very similar to using Final Cut Pro on my Mac using the Magic Trackpad. So there's not really like a learning curve there. It is a little, it does feel a little tighter. Like it doesn't feel as fluid yet as the experience on my Mac using Final Cut Pro, but this is a really good start considering 13.4 was just released. Scrolling feels really nice. You can't right click on clips, which I kind of miss. And I actually do that a lot in Final Cut Pro, but you can click around, you know, double click on a clip and you get to your edit options in LumaFusion. So that feels really natural. Wow, this actually feels more like a computer than a tablet right now. There's this whole thing about like, are you gonna use a computer? Are you gonna use a tablet? Which one's better? I can't really say which one's better. I think it depends on like what your task is and what your main purpose for using it is. The iPad can do almost everything that I need it to do except for Ableton Live, which I really, really crave in Ableton. If you're watching this, please, please create that. Honestly, I think if there was Ableton Live and maybe even Final Cut Pro for the iPad, I don't even think I would use a Mac anymore. Like, I don't think I would need to have a MacBook Pro or an, a giant iMac other than having a really nice big screen sometimes to work on, which is nice. But I must say, this just feels, I love, why is it so fun to just scroll around on iPad? Why is that so much fun? It's not as fun on Mac. Let's open another app here. I'm gonna open music, you know, scroll down in my library, got all my songs here. This feels really normal. I'm gonna go back to this view here, open LumaFusion. And I love the gestures. I actually love using the Magic Trackpad on my iPad. The thing about the iPad though is I, I like how it's just super portable and you can do so many things just using your finger. You don't need any extra gear or dongles or anything. It just works. So that's really this whole video, just kind of like my first impressions slash review of what I think about using 
the Magic Trackpad with my iPad Pro. I'm really curious how developers are gonna be creating like new shortcuts and stuff that you couldn't do with just your fingers and an iPad that you can do with a Magic Trackpad or a mouse. So this is kind of like the early stages of this kind of technology, but it's actually pretty cool and it definitely bridges that gap more between a tablet or a computer. Let me know in the comments what you think. Are you using a Magic Trackpad or a mouse with your iPad? What do you think about iOS 13.4 so far? I think this is really cool implementation and weirdly exciting for me. So if you're excited by this kind of stuff too, let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, you know what to do. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.